and get started. We'll start first with Travis Brown. Hey, Coach. Long time no see. Yes, sir. Good to see you, Travis. Hey, uh, uh, just what has the last this this second pause um, been like for y'all, and and how many players should y'all have available for for the game? Yes, sir. Uh, this this pause was a little, little different without spending too much time explaining the differing scenarios but when there's a pause announced you know it uh that's the truth but each pause is a little different and so our second pause was different than our first relative to the test results and what some guys were able to do and what some guys weren't able to do um our guys have handled handled all of this with incredible maturity despite it being the first time we've ever done it but in the month of February, uh, there were two pauses and obviously the snowstorm in between. But the second pause was a little different than the first pause relative to what we could do. So the guys that qualified, that's the, a poor use of words, but we could have one kid on one rim, Travis, and another kid on another rim with the coach standing at half court. Uh, and then uh, the administration, when all of this began, we bought uh, three weight racks that we could use outside. And so uh, in pause number two, certain guys were able to participate in one ball, one rim shooting, and then three guys at a time could go outside. So we were able to do that four days of the pause. And then um, yesterday, March the 1st, was our first day back and we were able to have everybody at practice. That was the first time since February the 1st. Uh, it'll be interesting to see Travis today, obviously will be the first time that we've had back-to-back -back days. And so we'll see, not everybody's at the same place physically. So we'll have to see kind of how today is relative to what yesterday was with everybody back. What's what's the message to the team going into these last two games because of these circumstances? Like you said, you want everyone to be on the same page. You want everybody to be on the same physical level, but it, in reality, it's just they're they're not. And how do you That's kind good. of overcome that to to get get a good good positive message, good vibe going to those two games? Do the best that we can. Uh, do the most that we can to help each kid relative to where they're at and what they've been through emotionally, mentally, and physically. And then and collectively as a team, can we play as hard as we possibly can? Can we play as together as we can? Can we play for one another? I think the thing that's hard, uh, Travis, to account for, and I don't even know uh, necessarily the appropriate way to articulate it is, yes, we've had some practices. In the month of February, we had nine total practices. Obviously, we didn't have a game, but in eight of those nine practices, we did never have the team. And so trying to have normal practice hasn't been normal. We're beginning to have some normalcy. Yesterday, we had everybody in practice, but you can't replicate a game when you can't even replicate a true practice. And so uh, the message is whoever can, as best they can, uh, relative to what has transpired, let's do it as unselfishly as we can with as, most, with as much energy as we can. And then tactically throughout the game, how can we find bits and pieces and minutes here and there where guys uh, can get a drink or some guys may only be able to play that length of duration. So uh, it's hard to know exactly what will happen tomorrow, but uh, we need to have a good day today because yesterday was the first time we had been back together since February the 1st. Yeah, and then finally, um, with it being senior night, what what is the with with these guys get potentially getting an extra year or not? What's the protocol with with y'all to know how that moves forward with these guys? And and I know um, there's still some time left, but but um, what that looks like and what the future looks like for some of these guys. Uh, it, it will be senior night uh, tomorrow. Obviously, uh, Save and Jay were here before we got here. Uh, and they were Aggies before we arrived. Q came with us. And then I think Marfo, uh, he made his decision, I think, in what was the third week of the pandemic. It was towards the end of March, uh, a couple of weeks after the season had been canceled. So 
obviously those four guys all have differing paths to some degree. We will celebrate them tomorrow night before tip off. And then Travis, how this unfolds, you know, when the NCAA uh, announced uh, that this year was a, I don't know if free is the right word, you know, that's not just for the seniors in truth, that's for everybody. And so that decision will have long lasting impact on every sport. Uh, and the reason why uh, I think a lot just focus on the seniors is the f- next year uh, you can, the seniors don't count towards your cap, so to say. Uh, but in following years, uh, everybody this year doesn't count. So how this all unfolds, I don't know. And I'm not dodging that question with the seniors or with any player on our team. I think that's something we'll have to work through once we get on the other side of the season and considering what's transpired over the last month, it just hasn't been a priority to try to figure that out. And, and I don't know if I'm like most coaches or not. I just don't think that in the middle of what we have been through over the last six or eight months, I don't know that having that discussion is the right thing when you're still in the middle of the season. So Maybe we'll take a few days off uh, just because of all that has transpired uh, and then kind of get back together and then start trying to figure some of that stuff out on what's best for those guys. Thanks, Coach. All right, next up, we'll go to Owen Buchanan and then we'll go to Chip. Um, Yeah, hi, Buzz. We all understand the difficult situation you are in, have not played and and hardly practiced. do you glean any kind of optimism from the fact that you're playing a team that you've already seen and probably had your uh, m- maybe the best moment of, of the season for you? It was a good win. We were pretty good in the second half um, at their place on the glass. It was our lowest uh, turnover game up until that point. I've been able to, you know, I've done a lot of scouting reports for games that we've yet to play. Uh, and so, I've been able to go back and watch Mississippi State. Olin, if you look at their numbers when we played them the first time in mid-January and where they're at in early March, they have really, really improved. Um, They were 110th defensively in some of the numbers that you study uh, when we played them, and they're in the top 40 now. Um, Obviously, two shot blockers that are among the best in the country and then two ball guards that are really hard to guard that also have a presence on the glass. So their, their team has changed um, and, and in a good way. And then obviously uh, they have been playing and practicing. And so um, you, you can kind of see as I started watching, cause I've had more time than normal. You can kind of see their progression as they've gotten to this point. Um, but there's optimism for our guys Olin in a very simple way. Uh, they're, they're excited just to play. Uh, that does not necessarily mean that we're going to be aesthetically pleasing, but after what has transpired, similar to what you said, like, wow, I get to play again. And for a player to be able to play after such a, a month, like on other, any other that they've ever experienced, I think there is some excitement in that regard. Was there ever a time when you thought your season was over? Oh, and I, I, I don't know, um, and I've been maybe too transparent with you guys. That this is so unprecedented that I, I don't know necessarily what to think. Uh, I've tried to be prepared. I have tried to stay positive. I have tried to be um, someone that can listen to our guys while at the same time maybe giving them wisdom on how all of this could potentially turn into something good, not necessarily now, but later. Obviously, the relationships are in completely different places because of what we've had to go through. Uh, So it's just so unique that I don't, I'll be honest, like it seems like an eternity, Olin, until 7.30 tomorrow night uh, because time just slows down because everything is, well, are you going to play? I don't know. Are you going to practice? I'm not sure. Who's going to be at practice? So it's a little complicated and complex to explain. What are you going to do in practice? 
kind of depends on who can practice. Well, how long will practice be? Not sure. Do you think we need to put in new plays? Don't know because how many are going to be watching on Zoom? How many are going to be sitting on the sidelines? How many are actually going to be in on the floor? So I, I, I've tried to go hour by hour uh, and not because that's necessarily the right thing, but what is it that I can control and what is my response to those things that I can control? And obviously it has tested my patience and my maturity in a way that I've never been tested, not as a coach, just as a human being. Okay. Well, thank you very much, coach. I like those glasses, Owen. Need them. I can't see glove close. <laughs> I understand. All right. Next up, we'll go to Chip Howard and then we'll go to John Wilson. Hey, Buzz, I, I get at this level there. You don't deal in moral victories around here. You weren't hired for moral victories. But given everything that's happened, uh, aside from winning the game tomorrow night, what would you consider a victory for the program and for the team? Yeah, good question, Chip. Did we compete? Did we give our best? Did we play together? Were we unselfish? Were we on the same page in what we were trying to accomplish on both ends? We didn't fracture when things didn't go our way. Uh, we were the first to the floor for a loose ball. We were the first to give dap. Uh, we were the first to have great body language. Uh, it's the, the, the thing, Chip, that I've also learned in this is, yes, you can't practice. Yes, you can't play. But in many respects, you're, you're isolated from your teammates. You're isolated from those that you work with. And so anytime you're in isolation, it doesn't mean that any person has done anything wrong per se. It just means you're not together. And that togetherness is part of the fabric of what it means to be on a team. And so when you're trying to rush to get back to being a team on the floor you, you realize you've missed that time off the floor as a team too so it's the component it's both components because everybody's just sitting around processing what's happening to them uh and rightfully so when you just sit around day after day after day and you can't do what your job is or you can't do uh what your craft is and what you want to do so i i would i would say that would be uh, parts of some of the answer to your question. And given what a lot of teams have gone through and everyone wanting to get to Indianapolis, how surprised are you? Uh, um, was it the right decision to play these conference tournaments in postseason? Yeah, I think each of those uh, situations chip are a little different i think it probably depends upon the lens in which you're looking at them from you know um how many teams are going to be on the waiting list to go to the ncaa tournament for the first time ever uh they're going to have the nit which i don't know that they were necessarily thinking they were going to do that uh there's going to be half the number of officials working the NCAA tournament than ever before. And they have to quarantine for seven days prior to the first game. You know, everything is uh, never happened like this before. And so I think uh, as a conference, uh, as an administrator, as an employee at a conference that represents all of the institutions that it would represent, I don't know that uh, they want to say, well, we don't want to offer an opportunity for postseason whether it involves Indianapolis or not, not being uh, condescending, there's only 64 teams that are going to Indianapolis. Well, there's 300 other teams, many of which their conference tournament is their postseason, and that postseason represents the opportunity to be one of the 31 that gets an automatic invitation to Indianapolis. So, for a conference tournament or a conference to go, yeah, never mind, we're not going to do that. I don't know that that would represent all of the student athletes. However, depending upon the lens in which you look, I understand why there's probably going to be some 
quote, opt-outs that we're not going to the conference tournament because we're already assured of going to Indianapolis. Thank you. All right, next up is uh, John Wilson, and then we'll go to Andrew Hattersley. Coach, for you and your staff, do things change at all, maybe today and then tomorrow? As you normally would deal with X's and O's, maybe you're dealing with guys just trying to get through the game? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's right. Um, the X's and O's is uh, important. It's part of winning. Uh, it does matter. I will never take that away. But all of the things that have transpired since the last time we played in Manhattan, Kansas until tomorrow night. That's a lot of stuff, John. Uh, that's a lot of stuff in each child's life. And that's a lot of stuff in truth uh, in each staff member's lives. And so there's a lot of families that are represented over that, whatever that ends up being, uh, 31 days of time, none of which was normal in any sense of the word. And so uh, will we mess up a play tomorrow? The answer is for sure prior to the first media timeout. Will somebody forget a play? Yes. Well, I call the wrong play relative to who's in the game. Yes, because some of the groupings of who's going to be in the game, I don't anticipate will have had many reps up until this point. And so uh, do we need to kind of be on the same page? Yes. Is practice important today? Yes, every coach would say that. But I agree with what you're saying. There's, there's going to be a lot, and how can we manage – uh, all of that in addition to the X's and O's like you kind of I think it's human nature and this is maybe too long of an answer when things are not perfect you try to create a way relative to your situation to make it better and it's it's the right intent but sometimes as you're creating more stuff because of your situation it it doesn't have the level of execution that it needs because of what has transpired specific to the situation, if that makes sense. It does. Thank you, Coach. Yes, sir. All right, next up is Andrew Hattersley from Gigham 247. Yeah, Coach, just with obviously a couple games left in the year at home, is there an opportunity, do you think, to kind of generate some momentum heading into the offseason that you guys can, can kind of build off these last couple of weeks? I sure hope so. Uh, that would be great. After all that's taken place, if if we could have some momentum after all that has incurred, that would be that would be tremendous. That would be tremendous. Uh, you know, we <clears throat> yesterday started the first of the month and uh, I take a lot of notes every day. I have a, a calendar that has too much information on it. And so on the first day of every month, uh, Bailey prints out my calendar from the previous year and the notes that went with that month. So the first two hours uh, on the first day of the month, I always review what transpired the previous March, so to say. So last yesterday, I looked at my March 2020 calendar and all of the notes that I took. And I study all of that as I planned March of 21 out. And, you know, just going through all of that stuff, Andrew, I think we had won five out of our last seven. Uh, we were the second hottest team in the league other than Kentucky. Um, had a bye going into Nashville. And, you know, I started reading all of my notes and my journal and all of the stuff on my calendar. And then think about what's taken place since March the 1st, 2020 until March the 1st of 2021. It's just uh, – it's been an unbelievable growth opportunity, although I haven't always processed it in that mature of a way. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Yes, sir. We got time for a couple more. We'll go back to Chip Howard. Buzz, have you personally had to deal with the virus? Yeah, I haven't had it, uh, but I have been surrounded by people that have had it. Uh, and that's you know, I, I've tried to be cautious, Chip, in naming names, whether it's our kids or staff members or family members, because I don't know that that's necessarily fair to them. And then uh, just to be honest, I get a little nervous. Like, am I supposed to say their name, not say their name? I just think sometimes maybe 
is, is this like an injury report or it's not an injury report? So I've just been hesitant on all of that. But yes, sir, I've uh, I've been around it. So you, you would be eligible to play tomorrow night. Yeah. And uh, I have mentioned to our guys that if for some reason I had to play, uh, I'll be over there in the corner. <laughs> and uh, if I have space to shoot, the only way that'll happen is if you drive towards my defender and you can play and he has to help, then <laughs> you can pass it to me. And so there's no confusion. If you pass it, I'm going to shoot it. And then on the other end, I'm ultra slow, but uh, very competitive. So I will foul out of the game quickly. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Coach, we'll wrap it up with uh, Travis Brown. Yeah, hey, Coach. Uh, you know, just in talking about um, looking back at your calendar last year and senior nights and coming in with kind of the expectations that you have after what happened, is this about the weirdest game that you're going to go into just from a – mental standpoint or, or, or an emotional standpoint? Yeah, I, you know, uh, someday, Travis, I'll show you all of my binders of notes and my book notes and all the calendar and all the stuff that I'm talking about. Uh, and when I was writing today, <clears throat> that was one thing I'm trying to get ahead of because I anticipate there will be a lot of that tomorrow night. And I feel as though my job is to help lead through that. And so I'm trying to always try to stay ahead on what I think is along the horizon. It's just, it's never happened, right? And so there's not an easy answer. And the other piece to this, Travis, is there's not an answer. It's not a singular answer because every person has been through something different. And so the umbrella of how can I help all of these guys the best I can. Well, for me, yeah, this is like, hey, Mississippi State's really good. And Arkansas, I didn't know we were going to play them. Man, they're really good. Uh, okay, well, that's two games in the next four days, and we haven't played a game in the last 30 days. Well, what do we need to do on Thursday? And then I'm hoping, and I know this sounds sarcastic, I'm hoping I get to talk to you guys on Friday because that means we have a chance to play on Saturday. But then I'm anxious on, well, can, are we even going to be able to practice on Thursday since I'm thinking tomorrow uh, evening will be a lot on our guys? And then what can they absorb mentally on Thursday in preparation for Saturday? Because we're, we're all out of shape in that regard. We're out of shape mentally, physically, emotionally. And so how can I handle not only tomorrow, but what's upcoming the rest of the the rest of the time. Thanks, Coach. All right, Coach, that's all we got for you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Good to see you guys. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.